Good morning, good morning. So you tuned in to that iguana talk. That's what we call the morning talk around here. If you don't already know, your boy's been catching lizards since a teenager, and your boy just found out that lizards are at the park in Miami. So what the fuck do you think's gonna happen? We're catching some iguanas, man. I've already caught two in 2020. But now, we're on the iguana talk, which actually has nothing to do with iguanas. We're talking tattoos, we're talking business, we're talking survival. That's why I call it iguana talk, because reptilians and the reptilian brain is the part of us that's focused on survival. It's like the caveman brain. So that's where we're focusing on today. I'm gonna share with you um, a really important subject, I actually created a Facebook post on these 31 lessons, so I'm going to read them off of my notes, and I'm going to expand and share a couple stories uh, that will drive these points home. So, today, we have 31 lessons I learned the hard way, working in tattoo shops before I opened my own, alright? My main goal with this is to, uh, you know, share what I've been through to help some people that might need the insight. They might need that, uh, that just uh, other lens to see things in because I've noticed a lot of tattoo artists, when you think of like, what is super sane mode? Like what's your, what's your greatest accomplishment you can have? Most people say they wanna shop. And uh, whether that's true or not, I think that it's important to understand what it actually takes to have a shop. Not only that, but what life actually looks when you have that shop. Like, what is your duties? What is your responsibilities? A lot of people want a studio because they think of the freedom that they get, right? But that's the thing is people don't understand what freedom is. They want recklessness. They don't want freedom because with freedom also comes controlled responsibility. But most people, when you like, when I want freedom, when I want to go just r run up on a mountain, that's not freedom. That's more like recklessness. And a lot of people want recklessness. A lot of people want to be able to not have to commit to times, not have to commit to an hourly schedule, things like that. That's recklessness. That's not how a business runs. Uh, so it's important to understand, like, if you want recklessness, the most reckless you can be and the best position you can be in to be reckless is a place, it's, it's when you're tattooing and you have very minimal responsibilities. So, you know, traveling artists and people who don't have a studio, people who don't have fam, you know, they, they can get away with being reckless, adventurous and all that stuff. But if you really want a studio, the level of freedom and the level of growth um, that you are able to, you know, make happen and the success in your business is completely aligned with the level of ownership and responsibility that you take on. So let's get into it, all right? Uh, before we jump into this, if you're watching the live video, comment hashtag savage. If you're watching the replay, comment hashtag cabbage and uh, drop a comment where you're tuning in from. I like to know where my viewers are. Um, I've had this YouTube channel for like six years and I haven't really gave it the attention it deserves. So the last couple of years I've been building my businesses, uh, kind of wanted to take a pivot and change directions on how I teach tattoo artists. I kind of got sick of teaching the art side of things and I was like, you know what, like I'm really big into the, I've been doing a lot more business than art over the last five years and this is a, you know, there's a huge uh, missing puzzle piece that a lot of people could, you know, be helped with. I'm gonna start sharing this stuff. This is the stuff that lights me up because it's just solved so much more problems that most of us have. So uh, that's when I started doing the business thing. But right recently, I've just been focusing on myself, focusing on my studio out here. You know, we just opened Savage Dad to Miami, uh, which is exciting. You know, we're able to repeat the business model, and maybe I'll get into that one time. But as of right now. It is nothing to brag about because it's still work time, man. Until I get this business, like my last studio, it's still work time. So let's get into the 31 lessons, all right? 
So the 31 lessons I learned the hard way in tattoo shops before I opened my own. There we go. Number one, don't act like a know-it-all, all right? Nobody likes it. No studio will ever give you more respect than bare minimum zero if you act like a know-it-all. Nobody wants a know-it-all. And I often question people that know it all because the more I know about life, the more I know I don't know about life. And the more I think I know about life, the more life seems to humble me and say, do you really know what you're talking about? Do you really know as much as how, how, how uh, confident you are about this? Are you sure you're that confident? That's my experience. I believe life works on a balance like dualism. So it's like you have the highs, you have the lows. When you think you're on top of the world, life will show you what the bottom is. When you think it's at the very bottom, you can't do nothing about it, life will show you you can make it up again. So don't act like a know-it-all. I wanna share, I wanna share a funny story that I had to go through. Um, for myself. So I admit when I was, <laughs> when I was 20 years old working for Gaston, owner of FK Irons and Spectra, it was probably the best opportunity I ever had in a studio. And I remember that's what got me fired was being a know-it-all. It was being that little young kid that was, I mean, really what it came down to was I was a kid that was afraid to ask for help. I was afraid to admit I didn't know anything. I was, I just felt like it was weak. And that's not how I seen it that w back then. I seen it as in exactly how I acted. Like, oh, I know everything, even though I didn't, you know, it was pretty ignorant. But really at the, at the core, once I actually, years later when I started to question like, yo, what happened? What's, what's really good there from like where, how can I see it now from a responsibility factor and what I could learn? And it was like, you're acting like a know-it-all, Dax. That's why you got fired. Lo and behold, four years in business, right when you're about to blow up and hit that $1 million mark that year, all of a sudden you hire somebody that's just like you when you were younger. Karma, motherfucker. That's what happened to me. I ended up hiring somebody that was just like me when I was younger. And it really was a slap in the face, you know, because I had to let him go because he was a know-it-all. And it's unfortunate because we could have done great things together. But it just, the two people weren't there to understand each other and grow together. One person didn't give a fuck and they just wanted to do their own thing. So it's like, don't be a know-it-all. Stay green, because when you're green, think about it, when a fruit is green, it's ripe. It's, it's no, it's, it's growing. But when it's ripe, it's that close to dying. So stay green. Number two, second lesson is, and by the way, just to, just to back up, like some of you might have to learn like I did by life showing you that you don't know it all. Mark my words when that happens and let me know when it happens. Number two, ask before you get into somebody's shit. That's just respect, all right? Um, if you're in prison, if you've been to prison, if you've been to jail, this is a very simple concept. And usually people that have been to jail don't have this issue unless they get their ass whooped. Like, you don't get into somebody else's shit, period. That's common sense. It's not okay to assume that it's okay to snatch up shit because you weren't prepared and didn't buy your own supplies, all right? That's a responsibility factor. Don't get into other people's shit. Uh, and I'm just gonna skip through some of these because that was just common sense. I don't think that needs a story to explain. Uh, but let's get into number three. Number three is don't gossip. This is the one, this is the biggest thing for most artists to get under control. They don't know how to control their thoughts or don't, what's spewing out of their mouth. And oftentimes, because they're not 
killing it in their own life. They're talking shit on somebody else that is killing it, which is unfortunate. Gossip last year killed my entire company. I had to let people go, people quit, and it was just a huge problem because of gossip. It's unfortunate I was across the country. I was in Thailand while gossip destroyed my team and people were thinking that I was moving money overseas into Thailand and not paying them. It's unfortunate when you put somebody on that's never had money, how it changes, you know, how they start to think because they start to get greedy with money. And it's, uh, it's unfortunate because I've been there too. But, you know, I've never fucked somebody over over money on my way up. I've never got money hungry and not made it a fair, fair situation. Because I've all, always understood what it's like to be a hustler. You know, and it's not about hustling that sack. It's about hustling that sack to get to the next one and double up and double up and double up. And it wasn't just to go buy cool, flashy shit. It's for survival. It's to build something uh, respectable. And so, man, gossip killed my company. And the reason why is because, like, here's the thing. Gossip, like, great people don't gossip. Average minds discuss people, great minds discuss um, situations, and the greatest minds discuss ideas. I think that's how that quote goes, uh, but it stands true. You know, the people that talk bad about people that are envious and stuff, like they're off path, you know, and uh, there's not much to say besides I don't associate with them. You know, I cut them off, I don't tell them much, I'm just out. Um, I don't. I don't vibe with people that talk about other people in bad ways, you know, um, you know, and I've been, a, I've been the person in the past to do that. And I've realized I don't like when people do that shit to me. You know, I had my whole team doing that. Not, not my whole team, but I had some of my team last year doing that. And, uh, yeah, man, it's, you know, it, it's one thing to have some motherfuckers online that talking shit on you that you just don't give a fuck about. It's another thing to have people that you really give a fuck about that are just so, you know, you've been out of town for a few months and gossip has completely taken their mind and their thoughts off of our mission and onto uh, some bullshit that they've created in their head. And uh, at the same time, it's unfortunate that I didn't have the strength to be able to course correct that situation and call it out before uh, it blew up last year. But good news is I, did solve the problem. I did bring in a whole new team from all out of state and Savage Tattoos cracking again six months later. Uh, we've been doing great. Uh, but gossip destroyed my team last year and the worst part about it wasn't that it destroyed my business, it was that it destroyed, you know, like people that I called friends and family. Uh, she got real weird real quick. But, uh, and what I, so I guess with this one, man, gossip, Point blank, that's what bitches do, all right? If you're a bitch, go ahead and gossip. If you're not, you know, disconnect from that kind of stuff. That's not, that ain't respectable. Fourth lesson, show the people that you work for that gave you that opportunity that you're grateful every single day, all right? And vice versa. The more gratitude and, and I mean, these days, like, People are expressing themselves in really weak and pathetic ways on social media. Like, people are looking for attention. They're looking for self-esteem in all the wrong places. And you know what works better than making a Facebook post when people are feeling not special or not significant? Rather than making a post just to get a quick dopamine high, what means more is when somebody actually compliments them in real life. And... This thing, like, especially if you're a learning artist, you are taking a handout. You're joining somebody's table without providing anything for the food. You're eating off somebody's table and completely taking off of it without putting onto it. That's what most apprentices do, and they don't see it that way. They just, assume, like, you understand, if you want to go to a craft skill, you, you craft school you usually have to pay twenty thousand thirty thousand dollars you go to college you have to pay a hundred thousand dollars for learning 
come into a studio, you get it free. You just got to, you know, hang around the studio. I wouldn't look at it that way. I would look at it like you're in debt, thousands and thousands of dollars to owe that mentor through action, through, and not just that mentor, but yourself, because really in that mentor, it's not about that mentor, it's about you. And every time that you have an issue with that mentor, it's probably because you're not doing you right. You're not uh, embracing the challenges that your mentor is seeing and trying to get you through because you're, you're dropping the ball, you, see, you don't see it from that higher level mindset that has learned those lessons already. In many cases, I can't say for everyone, but the, if you want to uh, increase the odds of you staying at one shop, increase the vibe around your team and the tribe that you are around, show them gratitude all the time. Show them that you're grateful to be around them in any way that that comes out for you, but don't take it for granted. Number five, be humble, put your ego in check. Um, this comes out in many different ways. You know, sometimes people think ego and they think confidence. Sometimes they think ego, they think cocky. Um, really, there's always another level. It's okay to brag about your accomplishments a little, little bit if you're proud of them. The only people that are going to be upset about those, about you, you know, talking about something you're proud of are people that aren't proud of much of their own lives. And that's okay. Ain't nothing wrong with you talk about what you're proud about. At the same time, understand what the ego is. There's a book called The Power of Now. It'll explain to you what the ego really is. The Power of Now and Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. Those two are very great if you want to understand the ego. Many people, like these days, people think that they understand what the ego is. And uh, they don't. They have no fucking clue what it is. They think that they can take it off. You can't take your ego off. It's a tool. It's part of you. And you have to learn how to use it as a tool. A lot of people want to give it away. They want to try to kill the ego when the ego is part of you. Oh. All right. Next one. Don't get strung out on dope. Can I get an amen on that one? Don't get strung out on dope. I swear to God, I had a really good team going on before, uh, you know, I found out one of my leaders was smoking coke on a tinfoil. You know, at that point, a good friend was fucking a lost soul. And uh, that shit never goes anywhere, man. Don't get strung out on dope. You're gonna ruin everything. It don't matter how on top of the world you think you are, it will ruin everything at some point. Number seven, track your income and don't blow your money. You owe taxes. 25% of all the income you make, you owe to the government after your expenses. Understand that stuff. Get a tax accountant or a tax planner if it's time. Understand how to do your taxes because if you want to know how to make more money and put it in your bank account, it's not making more money. It's doing your taxes right. That's how you're going to make more money. Tracking your income as well. See, this is the thing. How many of you guys want businesses? If you don't track your income and get used to, see tracking your income is the understanding of multiplying money and multiplying numbers. And that's what you have to understand in business. Like just because you're a good tattoo artist does not make you even ever qualified to own a business. Doesn't. A drug dealer is more likely to run a successful business than a good tattoo artist because they understand what actually matters in business. And uh, I want you to think about that because a lot of tattoo artists, you know, let's just, you know, stop beating around the bush. A lot of tattoo artists don't claim their income, which is completely dumb. They don't come, they don't claim their income. And because of that, they can't spend money on advertisement because once they spend money on advertisement, for example, if you don't claim your income and then you go try to put a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand into Facebook over the next year. Well, guess what? 
At some point, the government's gonna be like, hey, you only claim 5,000, but you put 10,000, 15,000 into Facebook. Where are you getting your money, bro? And that's where you go to feds, you know? That's where you get locked up for, for not claim, for, for some tax bullshit, man. That's how I assume it works. It's very uh, important to do your taxes right and track your income right. Uh, plus, I mean, because it starts just with tracking your income, just putting everything on a list. How much are you making? Once you have and actually know what you made last month in an exact number, because you're that close, you're tracking it every day, so it's like the back of your head, you can look at every month and say, am I going up or am I going down? And if you're going down, it's very simple to say, all right, well, how can I just get a cup? How much more do I need to go up? Do I just need a couple more clients? And here's just a quick tip that I, this is a test that I give every single person that I'm considering uh, working in my studio. It's a test, I don't tell them it's a test, but this is a test. Um, because most of them say, you know, everything's great, I wanna work for you, Dax, but oh, when it comes down to moving out there, now I'm scared, and now I don't have the money for it, and now I have all these excuses and stories as to why, it's a, why I'm freaking out now. It's kind of like a first time tattoo client. It's like they freak the fuck out before the tattoo. You're not anxious, shut the fuck up. You're excited, man. Just follow through with it and push through that fear, man. Don't get your head all fucked up. But a lot of artists do. But here's the thing. This is my test because I don't work next to people that are not re resourceful and just are retarded. So what I do is I do this. I say, all right, you need about 2,000, 2,500 to come out here. About 1,000 for the place for a short-term rental for the next 30 days. We're not doing any guest spots less than 30 days. You'd be a fool to do a guest spot less than 30 days and really think that you're gonna get a good idea of how living in that place is. You understand? Like, so many artists go out there to do guest spots and fill it out at the top of the weeks. Like, it's like, you will never under, you're going on vacation with intentions to live there. And it's never like that. If you do that in Miami, you Miami will eat you fucking alive. From the money that it costs to live out here, to the uh, distractions, to the uh, opportunities to go crazy out here. Like, it's unlimited. The um, influences out here, like, everything's unlimited. If you don't have discipline out here, you get eaten a fucking alive. And so... When it comes to tracking your income, like the more you track your income, the more you're gonna actually know what your numbers are. And the more you actually know what your numbers are, the more you can actually grow those numbers. Now, fast forward five years, all right? This is, we're just talking about just right now, you as today, writing these numbers down. Now, in a business, when you want to own a business, there's really only two numbers you need to know. And number one, you have to understand a real business has real advertising, which means you come out of pocket every single month and you spend money on ads and it's consistent because you know your ads are working and you know every dollar you spend turns into more than a dollar, all right? That's a working business. A lot of tattoo studios, they don't run the advertisements. They just wait for business to come to them. They aren't in control of their businesses. They are working, their businesses are in control of them, determining their quality of life, determining how much they make, how much their team makes, when all it takes is to switch from playing defense to jumping on offense, learning or paying somebody to do advertisement so that you can play an offensive approach and get more clients. And um, when it comes to being the business owner, see like my team doesn't look at it like this way, but when I'm spending money on ads, um, I look at, okay, so I'm gonna spend 1200 this week, cool. At the next week, we have a meeting. How many consults did we get for that 1200? How many of those consults got booked and how much deposits got taken? How much tattoo services got done? And how much, you know, total end? So how much total end did that 1200 turn into? And I break that down, so okay, it turned into 8,000, great. Let's, t let's minus expenses. Let's minus all the crazy software fees and shit. Um, and then let's look at, let's break the percentages for the artist. Cool. So every dollar that I put in the advertisement turns into anywhere of two or three bucks. 
How long would I do that? Well, I'm gonna do that forever as long as it's two or three bucks. Now, once I start putting a dollar in and I get half a dollar, that's when it makes sense not to spend ad money, right? But if the numbers continually multiply, then I'm gonna keep doing that. It's just like, you know, back in the day, serving dope, you know, double up, double up, double up, double up. You don't spend all that money because then you can't come up. You can't keep going. So it's like when it comes to actually owning a business and knowing where it is, after you've got the systems in play, after you got the team in play, like once you're at a place where you're like, I can do what I want, when I want, where I want, with who I want, as long as I handle the bare necessities of my business, I can live in Miami while my studio's over there. If, if you're at that point, you, the, there's only two things that matter outside of you know how your team's feeling and obviously your responsibilities as leader. On the business side, there's only two things on the fine, like when it comes to money. It's um, how much does it cost me to get a new customer with advertisement? And how much is that customer worth on the first visit? Now for me, I know my studio in, my, in Utah's average customer worth is between 300 and 400 bucks. And I know to get them, it costs much less than that. So I'm gonna to continue to keep getting them because it's multiplying the income. Does that make sense? It becomes a numbers game at some point because nowadays we got the beauty of, uh, see, and back in the day, 10 years ago, the reason why you don't hear other studio owners talk this way is because they never had this option. There wasn't Facebook, there wasn't Google, there wasn't all these things, and there might have been, but they weren't at the level they are now where you can track everybody and put a cookie on an email address and understand, holy shit, this dude um, signed up for my free consult link and three, three months later they ended up coming. I thought, I didn't know where they came from, but three months later they seen some of our emails go out and they decided to come to us. Um, we know where that customer came from. Whereas um, back in the day, you'd never know what advertisements were working because you don't know how to track, you don't know you know, how they're coming in from where. You just know people are coming in the door or they're not. But nowadays, you can get, like, we have the opportunities, the software and stuff to be able to track all that kind of stuff so we know exactly what ads are working, what ads are not, and shit like that. So that's the numbers. And until, so, you know, when you're learning business, you need to know how much does it cost me to acquire a customer, which means pay for a customer, and how much does it cost? How much does that customer worth? And if those two numbers make sense, then that's what you got to focus on at the end of the day. Um, that's the goal, anyways, is creating a system where you can see those numbers every day. Uh, but it starts now. It starts now with the small stuff because if you can't track your income now, you will never track it later on and understand this stuff. And sure, you can pay somebody to do your payroll, but you gotta understand, do you have an extra 1,500 bucks a month to do your payroll? Um, you know, you gotta understand, if you're not gonna do it yourself, you do have to pay somebody to do it right. So, uh, you know, wh how I run business is I make a bunch of money, and to get my time back, I hire people to do all the busy work so that I can focus on making more money and focusing on my strongest uh, strength in my business, which is creating systems, the direction of it, doing my tattoos, doing my art, and uh, not doing the stuff that I'm not good at, not doing the stuff that I'm, that's just a lot of busy work. I outsource that, I delegate that to somebody who's much better at it than me. I kind of got on a ramble, but I want to back up to what I was talking about with the 2,500. When I was saying about, you know, this is a test for artists, okay? I didn't continue that. And what I wanted to say is like, every one of you guys, if you're having it like, test this out. How many, you know, go ahead and look at your customer list. How many customer and phone numbers can you, you know, collect and pick up in a list right now? See, when I was fucking 17 years old, I had lists of customers in my notebooks to where I could contact them when I'm out of town and book out a couple months before I'm in town. Back then, I didn't even have a studio. I was working out of the house, all right? Some tattoo studio owners still don't even do this. I was doing shit, I was doing more business than them before I had a business. Um, because I understood that collecting information is 
the valuable part of your business. It's the relationships with your clients and you keeping contact with them, continual contact. Sometimes just being on the forefront of their mind will help remind them to go to you rather than the next guy with a tattoo. So it's like, right now, create a huge customer list, write it down. Everybody you tattooed, find their names, phone numbers, emails, even get them on Facebook, whatever the fuck you gotta do. Go find that list, create it, and use that. You can text them every single month, just one time, and send them an offer. All right, you'd be surprised how much more money, you'd be surprised how easy it is to double or triple what you bring in per month just by reaching out to prior customers and giving them a reason to come to you. See, most of you guys don't give them a reason. You just say, hey, my hourly rate is this, when are we gonna get you in again, all right? That's cheap, that's lame, all right? Your hourly rate is not what you deserve. It's not what you get paid for. Your hourly rate is the thing, it's the number that allows you if you're smart, to position yourself. It doesn't mean you're gonna get paid that all the time. In fact, what smart people do is they use the number, if you're 150 an hour, and they create that as like, yo, I'm 150 an hour, but I'm not gonna charge you that today. I'm gonna to charge you this. That's what your hourly rate for is for. Those of you who expect to get paid your hourly rate, the reason why you don't and you have struggles getting paid is because that's not how it works. People don't pay what things are worth as much as they, they pay thing, they pay for things that are valuable, but they still want to feel like they're getting more of a deal than they're, they're, they're spending less money than it's worth because now they feel like they're getting more of a deal and that's why they give out the money. That's why there's that, there's not just that equilibri equilibrium balance of them just saying, oh, I'm unsure. When they fork over money, it's because it's a no brainer. How can you make your services more irresistible? One thing I tell the, the uh, artists, like, and this is a foolproof thing, I've seen it so many times, but I tell them like, you need to make 2,500. 1,000 for the place, for a month, 1,500 for whatever else you need. And um, they say, okay, well, I don't know if I can make 2,500. Well, this is how you can, all right? You only need a customer list. You hit up that customer list, say, hey, what's up? It's Dax, and this is something I actually did. It's Dax, I'm moving to Miami, um, you know, to, tr to chase my passion as a tattoo artist. And all these people know what you're about. They know you're passionate about tattooing, but you say, look, I'm moving to Miami, I'm moving to Utah to go work for Dax, Savage Tattoo, to go chase my passion, get in an environment where I can, where it supports growth and the dudes give a fuck about us. I wanna work over there. And, um, but the problem is, is I need to save money to, for the trip. And so I also wanna tattoo all of my prior clients again, I know we got some unfinished work and you might want another big piece before I go. This is gonna be like the last piece that I do on you. I don't plan on coming back here very often. Don't count on that to finish your tattoo. You'll be waiting way long if it ever happens. I just wanna create like, I wanna tattoo you one last time before I take off. And you know, in by, by offering you this, I wanna offer you an all day session. It's normally a thousand bucks, but I'm gonna hook you up with half of that, 500 bucks for the whole day. I'm only gonna do this for four or five people, but I wanna do this because that four or five people will turn into that 2,500 and then I can take off out of town. That's my goal. And you just reach out with that kind of offer. Obviously you wouldn't do that forever, you know what I'm saying? But you would do that if you need to make that money to go out somewhere that you really wanted to go. So this is my test for newcomers, like I tell them, Make that 2,500, if you can't do that, if you can't multiply income, bro, you a bitch, man. You need to figure that shit out. You ain't gonna learn that shit in my shop, man. You gotta learn, you gotta learn the grown ass man skills like that, which any man should know, all right? That's, you part, that's your responsibility as a man, is learning how to provide for your family and yourself and surviving. They say, you know, there's pickup lines out there that will get girls. You know what will actually get a girl? Showing and displaying that you know how to survive no matter what. That's what women want. Now, that's just a side note bullshit. But, like, you know, when if you want, whether it's a team, whether it's anything, people are mag magnetized towards motherfuckers that can make it. 
that can survive because us as a species, we want to survive and a lot of us know we're weak and we don't want to admit it. So we magnetize ourselves to people that are stronger based on their mission or whatever else. So, um, yeah. Next lesson, number eight, check your energy every day, all right? I wake up in the morning, I, I think about God. I think about beautiful day, think about, you know, catching some fucking iguanas down the street. I think about the palm trees, the warm weather. Like, I get my thoughts thinking in a good way because I know after 17 seconds, my thoughts, it's easier to find another good feeling and another good feeling and another good feeling and another. And the more I feel good, the more any type of action that I do feels good. And the people feel good that, uh, that it interacts with. And, you know, um, that's what we call inspired action versus, uh, you know, grinding away in fear and running from the past or something. Like, I've done that in the past. Whole nother video to explain that kind of stuff. But uh, it's a lot healthier to move to do actions through inspired action rather than pain. And if you are, it's okay if you are motivated by pain or an old life or something like that, I've been there. But at some point I realized uh, I was bored, I was unhappy, even though, and it was weird because it was like, I was unmotivated too, but it was because I no longer felt pain. I no longer felt that, that pain, so I no longer had the motivation. And then I had to start to look around, well, like, well, what does motivate me? And that's when I found out inspiration, like feeling good is now the thing. Having fun again is now the thing that attracts, uh, that, that I act on, rather than, oh shit, I need to do this because of something's gonna happen. Lesson nine, communicate respectfully. Communicate respectfully and communicate Openly ask questions. Um, don't bite your tongue. Don't bottle shit in. But understand, like, don't come with entitlement. Like, a lot of people bite their tongue with me when they're entitled because they know jack shit. They know I'm gonna call these motherfuckers out and make them really look really fucking stupid if somebody comes at me with an entitled attitude because I catch that shit right away. Excuses, negativity, entitlement, those three things, bro, I will rip your fucking face out if you come anywhere in my circle with that shit. That shit does not enter. We're going we gonna to feed you to the sharks if that shit happens. Um, which, which is crazy. I just got to share a story because my artist Chato, like, he's an amazing dude, but I remember... He first came in, uh, when he first came into my studio, like we had it set up and he was just stressed out because the whole situation was new, but he was about to like give up and we had like 10 consults the next day for him, but he's like, I'm not making money. And I was like, how many consults you got tomorrow? He's like, I got 10. I'm like, oh my God, fuck. This is, this is stressful, man. You got 10 people. Of course, at least one or two of them or three or four of them are going to give you money. God, I don't know how the fuck. You are so stressed. You have every... Shut the fuck up, man. Switch that negative mindset. Like, take this opportunity for what the fuck it is or get the fuck out of here. We ain't got no time for no negative motherfuckers. Like, you man the fuck up. You got a family to take care of. You got kids, man. Ain't no rest for the week. Ain't no rest for no week. And that meant that talk that day, we never had again. But I tell you what, that talk did something to that man. And I'm so proud because it doesn't feel good calling people out. But it doesn't feel good watching people eat their own fucking shit and smear it all over their face and not even realize that that's the shitty life that they're living because of their thoughts, their actions, and just their whole view, all right? That's worse. And so I had to call the man out, and now he's bringing in 2,500 minimum every single week, all right? Now that's not his take home, but it's revenue, it's definitely providing for the entire team, and uh, I look up to Chato in many ways now. He's got a great personality, and it's crazy, just that one switch, but it was also the, either do or get the fuck out of here moment. Like, 
I don't sit there and be patient with that kind of shit, you know? If there's a virus, if there's a weed in the grass, it gets pulled right away. Next, I wonder if I got some comments on here. Still kind of... All right, if you're new here, drop a comment where you're tuning in from. I like to know where everybody's coming in from. Right now, we're in Wynwood, the art districts of Miami. Living it up, about to smoke this blunt. Um, I got a bunch more lessons here. It looks like I've only got to number nine and 10. So I'm probably gonna have to do a couple more videos because this one's already 40 minutes long. So I'm gonna wrap this one up. Um, with the final lesson that I learned. And then we're gonna jump on tomorrow morning probably. So be on the lookout, because usually in the morning, about this time or about 40 minutes earlier is when I jump on and uh, spit that iguana talk. So um, let's leave you off with this. So to continue with communicating uh, uh, respectfully, talk to your boss to find solutions to your work problems. If you're bottling up your emotions, you're not doing your part to communicate. You're not being responsible with your voice. That means you are creating an additional problem for yourself that cannot be solved. Unless your boss is psychic and can read your mind. Now, I don't know one tattoo studio owner that actually does tarot cards. And I don't plan on meeting them. I don't give a shit, alright? You, We are not psychic. You need to communicate. Stop avoiding your problems and solve them. Stop avoiding confrontation. Quit being a bitch. Man the fuck up and speak your truth. You might need to move shops. You might need to hit rock bottom first. You might, you, like, the worst thing you can do is stay in a place you don't like and complain about it. Like, that's bitch shit. When somebody is giving your family food and you're complaining about your boss, you a bitch. Like, that's lame as fuck. You deserve to be on the streets and fig and not get a job from anybody so that you can figure out what it actually takes to create your own job, then create a business where you create other people's opportunities and jobs. Because the reason, like, you have no, you have, like, that's upsetting because you don't know what it takes to create a real opportunity to pay somebody to do for a job to support their family it's a huge responsibility especially if you do it right like it's one thing to be able to hire somebody for 1500 bucks a month one month because you're starting something new it's another thing to consistently pay them 1500 a month for the next four or five years on time you know it's a big difference and it's always the people that don't know how to create their own job or create uh, they don't know how to create their own job. They don't know how to create a business that creates jobs for other people that always have something to say about a position. Got to check yourself, man. If you had what it takes to create and run a business like the man you talk shit on, go fucking do it. Otherwise, shut the fuck up. Because the only difference between you and them is they had the courage to grab their nuts and go fucking do it. All right? The stories you tell yourself as to why you can't do something, that's why you can't do something. Because there's somebody out there that had it worse than you, 10 times worse than you, and still did it 10 times better. Understand that. So let's, so that's the thing. With this last tip, this ain't even for them. This is for you. Because the more honest you get with yourself and the man in the mirror, and the more you start to speak up for what you want and to clarify and understand things for yourself, regardless if you, if it's not, if, if it offends somebody or not, like you got to do you because at the end of the day, you avoiding talking to people, talking to your boss, dealing with the problems, avoiding confrontation, like you're, you're putting yourself, you're bottling your emotions up. And guess what? Like, he's in control of your whole life type thing. Like, you might need to move. Then again, like, and this is one thing that's kind of funny too, is a lot of tattoo artists are like, man, oh, you still do this program. I want to learn how to tattoo. I want to blah, 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 blah. And they say I can't, they can't find a shop. They can't find an opportunity. Well, how many shops have you stopped by? How many opportunities have you went? 
Have you been, were you willing to spend money on the opportunity? Or are you just being a cheap bitch? Like, where, where are you coming at from this? You know, there's this one website that like, it's like your best mentor. It will teach you anything and it's free. You know what? It's crazy. It's a secret website. Type it in. G O O G L E dot com. Holy shit. You can find out how to tattoo better. You can find out how to market your tattoo studio. You can find out how to get into a tattoo studio. But guess what? You're fucking lazy, man. You're not being resourceful. If you can't even type on Google and figure out solutions to your problems, you are doomed. You got to be solution oriented. You got to be a problem solver. Like that's a skill. I didn't even put that on the list, but that's a huge skill. You got to be problem. You got to you got to understand problems and be solution oriented. And uh, speak up for yourself, man. Don't avoid confrontation. Like that's one of the best things you can do because nowadays everybody tries to avoid confrontation. And nothing great comes from avoiding confrontation. Part of being a man is dealing with your problems. Even if you're a woman, nothing more attractive and respectful than a woman who isn't intimidated to speak up for herself. You know what I'm saying? What up, Matt? We got South Africa in the house. Oh, where'd my comments go? Shit. What's good on that? It's Ohio, where I'm at now, man. Still an apprentice. I was going to type a question, but then you answered it before I sent it. So I just sat down and watched, listened, and learned. Much love, bro. Um, looks like that's all we got on the comment section right now. If you have a comment or a question right now, if you have a comment or a question right now, go ahead and drop it. Um, I'd love to see if I can help you out. But after this blunt, it's time to go get that work in, man. Go get that job. By the way, check it out. Got our little studio set up. Got the Gary V right here. It's just a whole ball. We got a whole lot of painting going on over here. Painting right there. Painting right there. Pretty low key spot. Give me a second. So I'm actually curious, like, where, you know, I'd like to know, like, you know, the people that are on here, are most of you guys, you know, where are you at in the journey? Do we got studio owners? Are most of y'all apprentices? Most of y'all in the house? Most of y'all somewhere in between? Like, drop a comment. Let me get a feel for where you are at in this tattoo ship. All right, y'all. That's all I got for you today. Um, today, build those customer lists. Contact your customers. Hit that offer. Do that 50% off an all-day session offer. Try it out. You don't even have to tell them you're moving and taking off. Um, yeah, you don't even have to tell them you're, you're taking off to another city. Just give them a reason why. Like, everybody needs a reason why they're doing this deal. And I would say, look, I'm just trying to do some... If, if you're not taking off out of town, do this. Say, hey, I'd like to give you this deal because, um, or I'm trying to do four or five of these because I'm trying to challenge what I'm capable of and I want to make it a win-win. So like I'm willing to cut something off the top to, you know, tattoo some cool clients that trust me with creative freedom. That's how I go about that. So own a studio in Ogden, also own my own home. Jason, you talking about Ogden, Utah? If so, what studio? There's Miami. That's the art district.
Jason Freeman, Cornerstone Tattoo Studio. Um, let me think about that. Where have I... You know, I'm familiar with your studio. I can't put uh, put it down, put my finger on where the studio is. Um, I've seen it though, bro. I've seen it when I was in town. I no longer live in Ogden or Utah. I mean, like I said, I'm Miami full time now. Across the street from the Dragon. You talking about the Dragon uh, on Historic 25th? Dragon Restaurant. That's what's up, man. I'm still, man, I'm not totally familiar. My ass, it's been so long since I got into <coughs> bars and shit. I act a fucking fool on alcohol, man. That's why I smoke so much weed. Just try to chill. <coughs> <laughs> Alcohol, man, no good for me. So, <laughs> how many uh, how many artists you got at your studio, Jason? Is it multiple artists? Just you. That's cool. So I'm guessing it's like a private studio type thing. Are you looking to? Are you looking to become like? you know, grow it or build it, or are you happy with where you're at? And by the way, also, like, just like Gary Vee says, like, Grant Cardone, if you know Grant Cardone, he says 10x, always build bigger. It's not always the case. Find out what makes you happy, because bigger doesn't make you happy. Bigger might make more money, but more responsibility, more relationships, more people on the line if shit falls sour. What percentage do you suggest is fair for a shop to charge if I theoretically had all my machines, needles, and inks? Probably 30%. Artists should probably take 70. My studio's different, man. I don't run a typical walk in the studio, wait for walk-ins. Like, I mean, last week I spent uh, over 1,200 bucks on advertisements for my Utah artists, you know? I spent about 5000 a month on advertisements for 50-50. So, I mean, and some are, some studios, they do the 50-50 thing and they just supply uh, supplies and stuff. But the truth is, is that's not what artists are. It's got to be a win-win for the artists. And no artist is going to see a 50-50 shop, especially in Ogden when they could come to mine that's spending so much money and guaranteeing, you know, multiple appointments booked every week it's it's not a situation that i would welcome that i would recommend you do especially just because i'm in that area and if not like i'm going to hit your artists up but if they just you know compare and contrast if they do the price shopping thing like how clients do they're going to find out there's just a better option out there as far as percentage now that's why most studios they do the booth rent thing is because you know they understand well, they don't want to do all the responsibilities for the artist. They want to put it on them. I would say it depends. Like, are you taking the role and responsibility to guarantee and fully book them so that they can make sense of that percentage? Or is it just for the supplies? Because if it's just for the supplies, um, I wouldn't even include that. I would tell them booth rent. You got to pay for everything on your own and make sense out of the booth rent. Thousand on booth rent per month. Because, like, this is a thing, guys, like, here's, here's the difference that it's, it's, as a business owner, you know, studio owners, either we want to open a studio because, one, we want to do our own thing, or two, we want to make more money. If you want to make more money, you ain't going to do that in the booth rent. You're putting yourself in a little, uh, you're putting a very low ceiling on yourself. I, when I started, it's funny because I started... And I had, booth rent was 325 bucks a month. To work next to Dax, 325 bucks a month. That paid the bills. Oh my God. Nowadays, it's very common for one of my artists to pay me 3,000 a month. But 
obviously because I'm bringing them business that they couldn't get. You know, I'm bringing it and I'm bringing it by the dozens. I'm, I mean, that's that's the benefit. It's like uh, everybody has a role on the team. You know, obviously the business wouldn't get done without the artist delivering a good hot product. But, you know, artists don't know how to get business. So that's where I bring in. That's what they split their 50 commission for in my studio. Does that make sense? So what, what route are you looking at taking? Because you're gonna do a lot less art and have to learn a lot more skills if you wanna uh, make a percentage and really a successful shop. You're gonna have to learn marketing, building systems, advertising, copywriting, payroll and how to multiply those numbers hiring which is one of the hardest things firing which is even harder what company to use when advertising you're gonna have to go out there man I mean I have a I have an advertising team I pay nine thousand dollars a month for my team and that's not my tattoo artists I have a team that's around the world I have one of my girls is in the Philippines. One of them is in New Zealand. Both of them are world class. I've had to go to marketing seminars, advertising seminars. Uh, at this point, I've uh, invested over half a million into workshops, courses, and my network and circle. And so it's, uh, yeah, I mean, that's how I got mine. You know, there's no easy way to do that. Uh, most people that are gonna say they can advertise local are losers. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. So uh, that's that's the journey. You know what I'm saying? If you're asking where the waterfall is, because the waterfall is, if we're all wanting water, we're all thirsty, and we're asking where the waterfall is. That's how you get to the. That's the treasure map. You know what I'm saying? Finding it is different for everybody, though. It's hard. Like my advertising, it's it's full. Like in my vi in my in my bubble, we offered it to other studios a while back, but uh, they just don't have the same business model as us. They think they do, but it's just different. Um, the mentality, the the they don't have the mindset. They don't have the advertising money to spend. It's tough, man. Like in order to get an advert, in order for to outsource an advertising team and make sense of it like think about it like this like I spend nine thousand a month on this stuff and it's like it wouldn't make sense if I was doing that for myself or another artist or another artist like bare minimum I have to have at least four artists to make sense out of those monthly every single month bills you know what I'm saying so it's uh it's different Every single month, in at least one of my bank accounts, I gotta have 9,000 bucks in there. Not to spend, but it's it's gotta go in. And advertising isn't a thing that works right away. Like, I've wasted probably 80,000 on ads combined. You know, advertising is, your own, that's the best part about it, is it's your college degree as a business owner. That's how you learn. You advertise, you find out what works and what doesn't. But that's what, that's how you pay it. Um, and then you cut all your personal expenses to bare minimums. I live a $2,000 a month lifestyle, maybe, 2500 max and I live pretty good but every all the money that you spend on pleasure and, and nice stuff and big house and multiple cars and insurance and all that that's all money that like you could put fuel into your business but you have to decide and everybody's different you know for me I don't have kids for me I don't have a whole lot of uh, 
expenses or things that I got to spend money on besides my business and its growth. But I'm curious, like with your studio, what's your main goal? Don't do that, man. Make a new goal. You ain't, it's not possible, dude. And I'm not saying that as an ego thing, but this whole fable where nowadays it's like these coaches, mentors, they try to tell you what, what they could do, you could do, it's not true. It's because the thing is, is it's not the strategy that you need. Like it's you. The reason why I was able to do everything I've done is because of what I've been through, all the stuff that allows me to take actions because really, you know what to do. I haven't told you anything different, you know what I'm saying? You know what to do. Sometimes I just tell you and you confirm that you already know you need to do it. Advertising, you already knew that. I just make decisions very fucking fast. I take very huge risks and I take a lot of them and I'm not afraid to fail. But I take those very fast so my speed of movement and from speed of movement, from decision making to uh, investing and spending money, I invested in $2,000 courses on how to do my business when I was 20 years old. So it's like, I've been, that's a muscle. As you invest, you start to invest more. Last year, I invested $50,000 into something. And still there, you know, we're still working and building on it. So it's like, as you grow, so do your investment levels if you're pushing them but it never gets easy. And one thing that allows me to do what I do is not having expenses, not having kids, not having huge payments on anything. It's all in, it's been all in since I started at 23 years old. Um, and uh, what people see on the outside is only the tip of the iceberg. Like I don't, I don't share everything because it would go over people's heads. There's absolutely no reason to do it. And I wouldn't even have time because I'm an operator of my business, you know. I got to focus on actually doing the things, not talking about doing the things. But um, I try to share these tidbits to give you guys a perspective. As far as... Uh, let's go... Hold on, we got some questions here. Good questions, good questions. I wish I could figure out how to get these comments to stay. <laughs> so Matt says, your work speaks for itself. Your work speaks for itself. Advertising is good, but word of mouth is free. Work quality stands alone. If you need to use your social media, you have available. Matt Miller, uh, this is a very common thing that puts a very small ceiling on artists. Um, some people's work speaks for themselves. You know, if you look at mine, I've developed it since, I've been doing it since I was three years old, tattooing since I was 13. And it's not just about the years, but it's about the intensity in those years. You know, I was doing it for a gang. It changed my life. That's all I had. I switched it up and I put that intensity into a positive direction. Um, Versus there's other artists out there that kind of dabble in it back and forth. They do the apprentice thing. They're doing more cleaning around the studio than doing art um, and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? There's different levels of effort and intensity. Um, and some people's work speaks for itself. If you're in the top 1% in your area, it does. If you're not and you're honest with yourself, you got to be honest. Like your work doesn't speak for itself. In fact, what I find because... You know, I don't know if you know this, but I have, ha I've offered mentorship on the business side of things and how to shift to specialized, how to make more money and do the business stuff. And what I found is in many cases, people that think that their work speaks for itself, they do, they say that as a reason to excuse them not doing anything differently. 
But ultimately, if their work speak for itself so much, then it would be like, where, how does their results speak? Do they have a, mu a bunch of shops? Uh, even if your work speaks, that doesn't mean you can have a bunch of shops. It requires a lot more. And even if your work speaks for itself, it only speaks to the people in the room, which means the only, you know, if you got a following of 500 people versus 50,000, that makes a difference. Um, you know, if you're, you're the only person in the room saying, showing off your work, it don't fucking matter how good your work is. And that's the thing is advertising doesn't replace work. Like so many people don't understand it. Advertising is the act of spending actual money your money that you have to, and there's no other way of doing this, it's the act of you spending that money to push out your message to more people. There's people that complain about the algorithms, like bitches. They complain about how it goes lower and lower for a free fucking service. Facebook gave you free, uh, a place to plant your fucking profile and plant your fucking lawn chair for free, and you're complaining about it. They didn't have to do that. They could switch it up tomorrow and they have every right to. It's their fucking lawn, all right? There's people that complain about that stuff. And then there's the people that understand like, yo, it's a blessing to even have this. You know what I'm saying? Like if I learn how to use this, I know I, like, I can use this to my advantage and I have everything, I have all the tools in my hand. I just need to use my fucking hands to learn how to use them. That's you know really the right mindset to have with social media because it's a blessing, it's like TV. You have your own TV show. You don't have to go get publicized on fucking Ink Master and follow a script. You get to create your own dog. You just got on. You got to take responsibility on how to make it. Um, but with the free stuff, like back to what I was saying. Imagine, like, here's the deal. Like, if you post free, if you go look at your analytics, if somebody wants to go look at their analytics, you can. I can prove this to you. You go post. Uh, unless you got massive followings, you're probably maybe a thousand, two thousand people are seeing you per month by all your free posting, no matter how good your work is. Now, this is going to range. If you got a huge following, this is different. But here's where I'm getting at is while somebody, people say, I don't need to spend money on advertising because my work speaks for itself, which is a very common thing. And really it's just an excuse because they don't know how to advertise and make it work for them. Because if they knew how to flip, they would. If they knew how to, because if once you get more customers and you get busier, a funny thing happens. When you want to raise your price, people actually pay it, you know? When you're booked up six months, people don't question you raising your price 50 an hour. If you're one month booked up, they do. You might not have that demand, that momentum, and so when you're spending advertising money, that's like offense versus spent, like posting for free is defense. When you pay, take an offensive approach and invest in yourself and spend money to push your artwork out there, you reach a whole lot more people. And it's very cheap on Facebook. For example, you can spend like 10 bucks to get like more than a thousand people to see your shit. Maybe even like 3,000. But like... I know at my last event, my workshop in Las Vegas, we had it at uh, Floyd Mayweather's house, uh, one of his penthouses. And we had one of, one of the artists, he owned two studios and he spent 300 a month, every single month for a year on advertising. And we broke down his level of exposure, we'll call it momentum, how many eyes continued to see uh, his brand, right? And then we broke down mine. And what we found out, it was insane. Like we found out that what I spend in one month is equivalent to how much this dude, like in order for him to get as much eyes as was that I was pushing out with my advertising, it would take him 10 years exactly. And that's with him spending 300 a month every single month for the next 10 years. So it's like, if you think about that, I did that in one month. So every single month, that's another 10 years of exposure to my brand. You want to know what makes a reputation of a studio. Back when people wouldn't advertise, it was 25 years. I was the, I was the studio that's been around. So people drive, this, drive around. That's how they see awareness to your brand. 
Nowadays, you can pay for that. You spend it on Facebook or Instagram, and those 25 years of having to build your brand become you know, five months if you spend that much and you got the right message and you just got it down. Like, it's not a matter of years, it's a matter of people that understand, that, that, that know of your brand. Grant Cardone says it, he's like, the reason why so many, every pe person, if they're struggling in business, the reason why, what would solve it, or the reason why they're struggling is obscurity. And if you Google what obscurity means, it means not enough know, people know about you. Big difference, you know, if you got a thousand people that know about you versus a million, it's gonna be easy to book that session. Now, obviously we can't just go out and get a million people. We don't deserve that either. You know, it takes work to build a million followers and shit like that. And, but you don't need that in your local area, but you do need something. And you get that from advertising a lot faster than um, free content, especially like, and obviously like you push a message out there and you got shitty artwork, it doesn't help, you know? So your work does speak for itself, but you gotta actually get people in the room. Does that make sense? And then the best part about that is then at that point, word of mouth is just expected because you're so good. You already know your, t your town's buzzing with your name, with your studio. You already know people are going to, you know, word of mouth is going to spread. Like, and not just from the people that you tattoo, but all the people that see your, the advertisements. Now, if you compare that to you're not spending money on advertisements, you're only getting word of mouth for people you tattoo versus people that you tattoo and all those thousands of people that continuously see your ad, especially if you do something funny or some shit, like something cool and fun and just shows your studio is not just, you know, it smells like fucking cigarettes and Cheetos and just, you know, harsh motherfuckers. It's like fun and cool and comfortable. You show that and show the story as to why you built your business. A little bit about that, run an advertisement to a video like that. And even if you don't see customers come in right away, you have people talking about that. And if it's who you really are, that's the thing. But a lot of people are afraid to share that stuff. A lot of people don't post their face out on camera and uh, for whatever reason. But regardless who you are, you just show who you are. That's the key, man. Jason, yes, do I still have my tattooing course? I still have it in my archives, but I don't offer it right now, man. Um, I just don't have the time to offer like assistance with logins if people lose passwords and shit like that. So it's just, it's not for sale right now. I've thought about offering like um, a how-to on how to build, how I build my studios from start to finish. Cause I've been documenting it um, out here in Miami to see how fast I can do it and like all the steps. Uh, that way, if I want to open more, it can be like a playbook I can just pass off. But I thought about having that. But, I mean, obviously that would cost, you know, it would be like upwards towards like 6000 or more. I mean, I wouldn't offer anything like that for anything less because it would be so much involved. Um, but I, I, that's still not out there either, man. So I'm not really offering anything right now. Your boy Dax is focused on his own shit. I'm just sharing a uh, little bit of tidbits, so I hope they help y'all. But you already know what to do, man. You just got to make decisions, take risks. Yeah, I'm building my studio by myself. You. Yep. All right, y'all. I got to get this jogging, man. So y'all have a good one. We'll talk to you later.